ਜੋ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਸੀ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਸਾਥ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੀਤ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਸੌਂਗ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਸੀ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਦੋ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰ ਲੈਣਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਬਹੁਤ ਥੋੜਾ ਸੋ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਦੇ ਬੋਲਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਅਰਸਾ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕਰਦਾ ਜੀ
year 2014 has awakened us being the centenary of the First World War. It's our duty to recognize the patriotism of all those peace lovers who protected the world peace. But ladies and gentlemen, what use it will we if only we recognize it and then let the memories disappear in time? That's why it's very important to hold an event such as the Council of Gurdwara Southeast has organized. This is an ideal way that the valor of the ancestor is passed on to the world and further by television, newspaper and publication relayed through the world. So at least it stays alive in the memories of the generation for the next century. Today we will hear chosen scholars and dignitaries exploring the role of six soldiers in the First World War, also witnessed by short documentary mixed with musical rhythms. So let me formally welcome the first citizen of Epping Forest, District Council, the Chairman, Council Tony Boyce. Please come onto the stage, please. Thank you. Call Lord Indaji Singh. Please come onto the stage, please. Kewal Singh Chana, the chairman of Chigwell Parish Council. Please. Uh, may I also call our vice president, Gurprasad Singh Bans. Please come to the stage, please. <laughs> Amongst us, we also have councillors from neighboring boroughs, community leaders, presidents, and committee members from Gurdwaras. We also invited the Ramgadia Council UK and Rinder Singh Ubi, the Secretary General, and Jagji Singh Tita, the Vice President of Ramgadia Council UK. So thank you very much. Our first guest speaker, Reverend Steve Adwell, on the stage, please. Reverend Edwards, a devoted chairman, Rev of Tamil Church at Wisdom House, he hosts the Timeless Wisdom Show on Sky 591. He has done extensive work on World War soldiers. So may I ask Reverend Steve to give a little speech on the World War first. Thank you very much. First of all, allow me to say thank you not only for the honor you have given me to stand in front of you, but also the privilege to participate in remembering the heroes of the Great War. So I greet all noblemen, noble women, priests, men and women in uniform, the media, and indeed all and sundry. Welcome to this special day of remembrance of heroes of the Great War. Curiosity can make one embark on a journey so deep, so vast, that he or she may find himself or herself interlaced in the thoughts deranged from practical thinking we tend to begin to think about what if rather than what now. Is this bad? Of course not. It's human nature. What if there was no war? What if these heroes were not part of the war? What if history has been rewritten? What if never ends? It's part of the human nature. We must be careful not to let our what if focus more on the devastation of the war rather than the gains of the war. Hence, we would be doing the heroes for which we gathered here today an injustice. Ulysses Grant said, I have never advocated war except as a means of peace. When Marcus Tullius 
said, an unjust peace is better than a just war. When we think of a hero, we think brave, strong, and invincible. Isn't that what the people we are remembering today were? George Washington said, to be prepared for war is one of the most effective means of preserving peace. Back to our topic of discussion, on the 28th of July, 1914, Austria-Hungarian fired the first shot in preparation for the invasion of Serbia. Well, I'm trying my hardest not to drift away from the reason for our gathering here today, which is the commemoration of Sikh soldiers. Some five years ago, I met my good friend and a well-known historian, a Sikh gentleman by name Peter Barnes. In the process of time, we became close friends. I learned a little but deep essence of Sikh brotherhood, how they believe in the almighty unification and equality for all races and gender. Keeping myself away from preaching, let's turn to the war heroes. Nearly two years as we were approaching war centenary, I began to explore the war heroes, this great war, as I would eventually like to compile this test into a paperwork. Sitting with, sitting with Mr. Barnes, I mentioned my interest and opened my heart to share the view on various aspects of the cause and downfall of such words. Eventually, our talk turned to the sick soldiers. I was absolutely gobsmacked to learn that nearly 100,000 Sikh soldiers joined the British alliance. It amazed me to learn that these soldiers came from many thousands miles away from home to defend people that they did not even heard of. And they came voluntarily, no compulsion, no pressure. It was a willing act, so I could not help but to ask why, why. Mr. Barnes explained to me explicitly the guidelines of living style for Sikh provide, provided by their guru are called Rihat. According to the Rihat, it is, very, it is every Sikh duty to stand for the righteous act. That was it. I am hoping to learn more about these voluntary heroes. Let me remind you that Sikh made up 2% of the Indian population. And yet there were 60% of the Indian forces who joined the British in the Great War. They were awarded more medals, medals than the rest. They came to war leaving their children behind. Some just married and leaving their wedded brides behind. The sad part of this analysis is that majority of them never made it back home simply because they joined the army on a voluntary basis. These people knew the value of peace. They were also duty bound to deny tyranny. I'm very much fascinated by the story of a special Sikh soldier. Adit Singh Malik by name. He was very brilliant. He graduated from Oxford University. In the process of time, he responded to the call of duty by offering his services to the British Air Force as a pilot officer. The sad part of the story is that he was denied enrollment on the basis that no white soldier would take orders from a non-white, especially one wearing a turban. My history is my witness. This man did not give up as he joined the French Red Cross, but dissatisfied with not being on the front line, he applied for the French Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, he was selected by the French as a pilot officer. Through his success, he was spotted by the then commander of British Air Force, as well as his ex-tutor from the Oxford University, who then wrote to the authorities of Mr. Malik's achievement. The authorities saw it as an insult for the Royal Air Force that a British citizen was serving in the French Air Force. 
he was quickly called by the Royal Air Force and appointed as a pilot officer. Mr. Malik succeeded many flying missions, including fighting against the Red Baron. He was the only Indian pilot to survive the war and was later appointed ambassador to France. Such was the spirit of those war heroes. They did not shy away from the perilous and fatal situations, rather volunteered in all fronts. They gave up everything, including their lives, in order for us to live with our heads high in peace. We should and must value this peace and promise to maintain it. In conclusion, if we don't end war, war will end us. In peace, sons bury their fathers. In war, fathers bury their sons. The more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. War is not an adventure. It is a disease. It is like typos. War is a series of catastrophes which result in victory. I challenge us all in conclusion to salute those eternal warriors, the defenders of peace, and take this pledge to carry forward their resolution for our generations to come. May I take this opportunity once again to thank the organizers of this event for the privilege to mount this platform delivering this speech. Blessings. Okay. Thank you, Reverend Edward, for deepening our understanding of the First World War. Now, we would like to present you with a small gift comprising a trophy and a book written by Upinder Singh. And I will request our president to do the presentation. Thank you. Before I invite the next guest speaker, I would like to uh, tell you that amongst us, we also have Second World War veterans, and Havaldar Major Rajinder Singh Tat, a Burma star, and he's 93 years old. No, no, stay here. And Havaldar, no, no. ladies and gentlemen, and our Senior guests, Vaikur Ji Ka Khal Saab, Vaikur Ji Ki Fateh. I have to say two or three minutes. I have to say that 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 the first Sadi army, Jahor Sadi Kom, a bit Rakini Garsagdi. The Hon the Nojwan Jede Kisade army Jandene, as he Sare and Halo, it England the bit Sare and Okatia. Muslim, Hindu, is Hadin of the Adane army. As he is Mulkter in the ਅਸੀਂ ਚਲੋ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਤੋਂ ਆਏ ਸੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਬਰਥ ਹੋਇਆ ਉਹ ਇੱਥੇ ਦੇ ਸਿਟੀਜ਼ਨ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਮੁਲਕ ਨੂੰ ਬਚਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਵਲੰਟੀਅਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਆਰਮੀ ਚ ਵੀ ਜਾਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਦੂਸਰੇ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੜਕੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਬੱਚੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਬੀਬੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਲੜਕੇ ਚੰਗਾ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ or upper leg grade ਚ ਇਹ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਬੜੀ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਗੈਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਜੋ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਸੰਤ ਸਿਪਾਹੀ ਪੈਦਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਭੁੱਲਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਸਾਡੀ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਦੀ ਕਲਚਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਉਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕਾਇਮ ਰਹਿਣੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਆ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਕਰਦਾ ਅਪੀਲ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਿ ਆਪਣੇ ਪੇਰੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਤੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ 
ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਸਾਡਾ ਕਲਚਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪੁਰਾਣਾ ਚੱਲਿਆ ਆਉਂਦਾ 1699 ਤੋਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਲੜਨਾ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਗਰੀਬ ਜਾਂ ਕਮਜ਼ੋਰ ਦੇ ਹੱਕ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਖੜੇ ਹੋਣਾ ਇਹ ਖਤਮ ਹੋ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਫੇਰ ਅਪੀਲ ਕਰਦਾ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਸਹਿਬਾਨ ਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਯਾਦ ਕਰਾਉਂਦੇ ਰਹੋ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਡਾ ਕਲਚਰ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਰਹੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੂਸਰੇ ਮੁਲਕਾਂ ਚ ਆ ਕੇ ਇਸ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੀ ਡੈਮੋਕ੍ਰੇਸੀ ਨੂੰ ਬਚਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੜੇ ਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਆਪਣਾ ਕੋਈ ਮੁਲਕ ਫਤਾ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਜਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਲਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੜੇ ਔਰ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਦਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਬੜਾ ਮਾਣ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਔਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਬੱਚੇ ਆ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਪੁਰਾਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਏ ਸੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਜੇ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਘਬਰਾਉਂਦੇ ਸੀ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਬੰਦਿਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਤ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਦੀ ਕਮਜ਼ੋਰੀ ਸੀ ਜਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਕਮਜ਼ੋਰੀ ਸੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹ ਇੱਥੇ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੋਏ ਆ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਪਤਾ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਕਿ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਔਰ ਫਸਟ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਤੇ ਆਏ ਸੀ ਫਸਟ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 1.5 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਸੀ ਔਰ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਿੱਚ 2.8 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਇਹਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ 15 ਲੱਖ ਪਰਤੀ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਫਸਟ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਚ ਹੋਏ ਸੀ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਚ 28 ਲੱਖ ਬੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਚ 1 ਲੱਖ 62 ਹਜ਼ਾਰ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ ਸਰਵਾਈਵ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਿਆ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਲੜੇ ਆ ਸਾਰੇ ਮੁਲਕਾਂ ਚ ਲੜੇ ਆ ਯੂਰਪ ਚ ਵੀ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਇਹ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਲੜਾਈਆਂ ਚ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੇ ਲਿਆ ਇਹ ਆਪਣੀ ਪਪੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਹਿਸਾਬ ਨਾਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਸੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ 2% ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਇਹ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ 22 24% ਵਿੱਚ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਅਖੀਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਦੱਸਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਆਏ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ 1963 ਚ ਆਇਆ ਸੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇੱਥੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਫੈਕਟਰੀਆਂ ਚ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਚ ਜੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਫਸਟ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਦਾ 40ਵਾਂ ਦਿਨ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਦਾ 40ਵਾਂ ਸਾਲ ਜਿਹਲੇ ਮਨਾ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਆਰਮੀ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਬਹੁਤ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਮੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿ ਨਾ ਹੋਣ ਦੇ ਬਰਾਬਰ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਲੈ ਸਾਊਥ ਆਰ ਡੇ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ ਕਾਫੀ ਫੌਜੀ ਬੰਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਗੱਲ ਸਾਡੀ ਉੱਪੜ ਗਈ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਬੀਬੀਸੀ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੀ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਕਰਨ ਆਏ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਸਾਡੀ ਆਰਮੀ ਦਾ ਮੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ 28 ਲੱਖ ਸੀਗੇ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਚ ਤਾਂ 15 ਲੱਖ ਫਸਟ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਸੋਚਿਆ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਫੰਕਸ਼ਨ ਇਦਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਣਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਬਣਾਈਏ ਤੇ ਸਟਰਗਲ ਕਰੀਏ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੀ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਕਾਮਨਵੈਲਥ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਦੇ ਵੈਸਟ ਇੰਡੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਬਾਕੀ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਆਸਟ੍ਰੇਲੀਆ ਤੇ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮੈਮੋਰੀਅਲ ਬਣੇ ਸੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਬਣਿਆ ਆ ਅਸੀਂ ਫਿਰ ਇਹ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਸਟਰਗਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਮੋਨੂਮੈਂਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਮੈਮੋਰੀਅਲ ਗੇਟਸ ਇਹ ਕਨਸਟੀਟਿਊਸ਼ਨ ਹਿਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਉਸ ਤੇ ਬਣਿਆ ਹੈ ਜੇ
ਹਵਾਲਦਾਰ ਹਰਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਕਟੋਰਾ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ 에ਅਰ ਫੋਰਸ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਆਰਮੀ ਐਕਸ ਸਰਵਿਸਮੈਨ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਵੀ ਆਲਸੋ ਹੈਵ ਸਮ ਆਰਮੀ ਆਫੀਸਰਸ ਕੈਪਟਨ ਸਰਤਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਗੋਗਨਾ ਲਾਂਸ ਕੋਪਰ ਗੁਰਪਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਹਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਐਂਡ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਹਰਸ਼ਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਗੋਟ ਅਨਦਰ ਯੰਗਸਟਰ ਯੰਗਸਟਰ ਕੋਪਰ ਰਮੇਸ਼ ਸਿੰਘ ਆਫ ਹੋਰਸ ਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਆਲ ਫੋਰ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਹੇਅਰ ਨਾਓ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਲਾਈਕ ਟੂ ਇਨਵਾਈਟ ਆਵਰ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਗੈਸਟ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਲਾਰਡ ਇੰਦਰਜੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਟਰਬਨ 6 ਇਨ ਦਾ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਸੋ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਆਫ ਨੈਟਵਰਕ ਆਫ ਸਿੱਖ ਹੋਗਨਾ ਸਿੱਖ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨਸ and uh, editor of sikh messenger wai guru ji ka khalsa wai guru ji ki fateh to understand the role of sikhs in the british indian army and the part they played in the first world war we need to look back to the anglo sikh wars of the 1840s and some of you will have read how the sikhs fought so bravely and courageously that they created panic in london rest alarm that sikhs were at the point of defeat defeating the the point of defeating the forces of the raj and the british might be forced out of india but it wasn't to be despite the courage discipline and fighting skills of the sikh soldiers the treachery of some of the sikh leaders helped the wily british to triumph the fiercely fought conflict resulted in both the british the Sikhs developing admiration for the courage and fighting skills of their former enemy the british appreciated the sikh commitment to belief in one god their teachings on equality of all human beings and the importance they gave to the needs of others they began recruiting sikhs to the british army for their part sikhs appreciated the respect shown them by their former enemies and were happy to enlist recruitment increased rapidly and by the time of the outbreak of the first world war sikhs though only a little over 1% of india's population made up about 20% of the british indian army to encourage enlistment the british promised sikh promised india a measure of self rule at the conclusion of the war in return for indian support to beat the germans they also sent popular singers into the punjab villages to aid recruitment with the singing of martial songs and shabads the governor of punjab sir michael o'dwyer of jallianwala bagh notary said and kept saying that any sikh who did not join any indian who did not join the british forces was committing treason by the end of the war around 130 sikhs had found been on active service they fought on all the wars major fronts from the somme to gallipoli and across africa over 138 indian troops fought in belgium and france many of them sikhs more than a quarter of these became casualties the poorly clad and ill equipped soldiers from the hot plains of the subcontinent fought with great distinction in the freezing mud soaked battlefields of europe distinction in the middle east in the ill fated gallipoli campaign the 14 6 Sikh regiment sustained very heavy losses. The commanding officer General Ian Hamilton wrote to them after the battle, their devotion to duty and their splendid loyalty make a record their nation should look upon with pride for many generations. Many other plaudits were showered on Sikh soldiers by the British and their allies and rightly so. their courage and record in battle is second to none and we should remember them with pride they've set a high bar and we and succeeding generations must show we are equal to their challenge 
And in that, I'd like to again endorse what has already been said about the veterans here from the Second World War and to the new members of the British Armed Services. They have done us proud. Whenever I see the veterans of the Second World War, I keep telling them, you look so smart, you make the rest of us feel ashamed. They have done so much and are doing so much. History records that British, the British reneged on their promises and instead of a measure of self-rule, the subcontinent was subjected to further repression. The Roll Attack passed on in March 1919 effectively authorized the government to imprison any person suspected of terrorism for up to two years without trial and gave the imperial authorities power to deal with all revolutionary activities. Sikhs will note the irony of how a little over half a century later, Indra Gandhi used almost identical repressive legislation to stifle protest over the genocide of 1984. But history can have some strange twists. The repressive legislation of 1999 and the now universally condemned massacre of hundreds of innocents at Jallianwala Bagh in 1919 on Vasaki lit, lit the torch of freedom for the subcontinent. It was a torch that kept af was kept aflame by the sacrifice of many Sikhs fighting for independence. And by the end of the Second World War, a weakened Britain conceded that it was no, no longer able to hold on to India and decided to quit the subcontinent. But once again, Sikhs were betrayed. Their callous, the callousness of the British and the lust for power of the Congress resulted in the horror of partition and Sikhs having to flee their home. Moving further to the present, we are all too aware of the suffering of our community in the genocide of the 1980s. This brief look at the history of Sikhs in World War I reminds us of the incredible courage and resilience of Sikhs. It also reminds us that we can be too trusting and naive. We are now all too aware that our own leadership has too often been found to be wanting and out of greed or power for wealth even has connived with those that would do us harm. And this is all too true of the leadership in India today. In the absence of leadership from India, Sikhs abroad have a particular responsibility to give our community a sense of direction. We may be a small religion but in my lifetime, through lectures and writings, both here and abroad, I have seen how the Guru's teachings resonate with many other people all around the world and have much to offer, not only to our children, but to a world society that seems to have lost its sense of moral direction. Sikhs abroad have a real responsibility to help our brothers and sisters in India and put Sikhism high on the map where it should be. We have to look beyond demonstrations and empty slogans of Khalistan, which mean little making those demonstrations and slogans outside parliament or outside Downing Street mean little to the local population and only serve as irritants. We have to ensure that our aims and objectives are all, always consistent with our Guru's teachings. We see on the board that, uh, of the Sikhs carrying the Guru Granth Sahib into battle. They knew that what was most important to Sikhs, it is centering our whole behavior, our attitude, everything that we do on the teachings of Guru Granth Sahib. We should be true to those teachings. And in addition, 
what we need today is a little bit of the strength, courage and idealism shown, shown by Sikhs in World War I and World War II just to serve and to remind us to meet the many very different challenges but equally important challenges of living today true to our Guru's teachings. Why Guruji Ka Khalsa? Why Guruji Ka Khalsa? My Lord Singh, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen. As Chairman of Epping Forest District Council, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Epping Forest and thank you all for the very, very warm welcome my wife and I have had. To attend the Council of Gurdwara South East Commemoration event marks a centenary since the outbreak of the First World War. The Sikh contribution and involvement in the war is often overlooked. This event will serve as an important and poignant reminder to today's younger generation of the sacrifice your forefathers made whilst fighting for Britain. Although accounting for just 2% of the population in British India at that time, the Sikhs made up more than 20% of the British army at the outbreak of war. By the end of the war, around 130,000 Sikhs saw active service from the Somme to Gallipoli, across Africa and the Middle East. Their devotion to duty, loyalty to their regiments should make every member of the Sikh community proud and we in Britain owe them our eternal gratitude because of their sacrifices have given us the freedom we're all enjoying today. Thank you very much. Please welcome my guests. Wahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Thank you very much for the invitation to come here today. I want to say something personal to begin. In 1964, uh, in September, I started uh, eating my school lunches in this hall. I was a student at Buckhurst Hill County High School for Boys and I was here for seven years until 1971 and so it is a very strange feeling to be addressing a meeting on a historic occasion where we are thinking back a hundred years and if I think back 50 years I was in this hall. One mile away from here in uh, Chigwell Church, just outside, there is a list of the names of the people who died in World War I, and also there is a separate list of those who died in World War II who were living in Chigwell at that time. And on that list is William Frank Gates, who was my late father's uncle, my, my father never knew him, but he died in the Battle of the Somme in 1916. All around this country, 
there are similar memorials. And in France, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, and in the Middle East, and in Asia, and in Africa, there are similar memorials listing the names of people who died serving our country. Many of those were people who had never even visited our country in the sense of the United Kingdom. They were part of the British Empire forces. Young men who volunteered in India or in Africa or in New Zealand or Australia and then or from the Caribbean who fought for our side in that First World War and others in the Second World War. And so those young men often died in Europe having never been to Europe before and having never been to the country which was the heart of the empire for which they were fighting. And we have to remember those names that are not listed as well because many of the names of those who died in the First World War are not recorded. They are not on war graves. They are not listed. And so there are members of their family, there are members of their community who do not have the details of where they died and cannot have that knowledge. We must remember all of them at this time. The conflict which led to the First World War started about an incident which has already been referred to, the assassination in Sarajevo in what was Serbia of the heir to the throne of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And as a result of that, the Russians and the Austrians and the Germans and the French and the British and then many, many other countries were engaged in a war that left, led to the deaths of tens of millions of people. And that was supposed to be the war to end all wars, the Great War. But the reality is, some 20 years later, there was a Second World War because the conflict of the First World War did not resolve some of those issues and in fact led to further difficulties which led to the Second World War. And today, whether we are looking at what is going on in the Middle East, in Gaza, in Iraq, in Syria, or if we are looking at the killing which is going off on in Ukraine, we should be conscious that conflicts which start in one place can soon engulf millions of people in many countries around the world. So we all have a duty, as we remember, to also work collectively for political solutions to many of these very difficult conflicts. We should respect and praise all those who gave their lives serving their country to make us have the ability to be free and have our democracy and our right to choose our way of life. But we should also vow to make sure that we do our very best to make the world a peaceful and prosperous and just place for all its citizens. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, may I request Satnam Singh Sandhu to come on the stage, please, to do the presentation? ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਮੈਂ ਵੀਰਾਂ ਤੇ ਭੈਣਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਰਨੀ ਪਹ
before i say anything else may i request you all to stand up who can for 2 minutes to give salute to those who died for us to live please khade ho jao sare and we will hold silence for 1 minute for our shaheeds cannot stand please don't do one minute from now ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਰਾਮਗੜੀਆ ਸਿੱਖ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਯੂਕੇ ਦੀ ਬੜੀ ਹੀ ਧੰਵਾਦੀ ਹਾਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਵੀਰ ਸਿੱਖ ਬ੍ਰਦਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਾਈਡ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯਾਦ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਆਫ ਸਿੱਖ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਯੂਕੇ ਆਮ ਸੌਰੀ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਜਸਟ ਕਰੈਕਟਡ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਆਫ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਸਾਊਥ ਈਸਟ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਥਰਡ ਟਾਈਮ ਲੱਕੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਐਂਡ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਮੇਰਾ ਪਰਸਨਲ ਥੈਂਕਸ to giving me opportunity to be here for one second i'm not going to speak too much enough has been said already but this is the day which we should carry on to celebrate for future to teach our generations what our forefathers has done and what we need to carry on in future same time my request will be to brothers and sisters that we must preach sikhism if we can teach our children what has happened past going to gurbani ranme tarjud guru gobind singh ne shabd hai deh shiva var mohe eh shubh karm te kab hu na daru sanu saryan nu hi ral ke shubh karm karne chahide han aur apne bachcha nu ese te hi lead pani chahidi hai aaj di shraddhanjali mainu badi khushi hui mere aa veer sahiban jehde front line vich baithe han inna de main pehla vi darshan ਹੇਜ ਗੁਰਦਾਰਾ ਸਾਊਥ ਹਾਲ ਕੀਤੇ ਔਰ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਵੀਰ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਆਏ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਟਟ ਬੜੀ ਹੀ ਸੋਹਣੀ ਸਪੀਚ ਕੀਤੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਅੱਜ ਤੱਕ ਪਤਾ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਵੀਰ ਸਿੱਖ ਅੰਕਲਸ ਬ੍ਰਦਰਸ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਹੋਏ ਸਨ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਚਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਕੌਮਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਉਹੀ ਕੌਮ ਸਰਵਾਈਵ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯਾਦ ਰੱਖਦੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੀ ਅੱਜ ਇਹ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਹੀ ਡਿਊਟੀ ਬਣਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯਾਦ ਰੱਖੀਏ ਔਰ ਪ੍ਰਣਾਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਰਹੀਏ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਮੈਂ ਹੋਰ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਹਾਂਗੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਵੀਰ ਜੀ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਆਪਰਚੂਨਿਟੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੀਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ 1 ਮਿੰਟ ਸਾਂਝ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਮ ਬੋਲੇ ਸੋ ਨਿਹਾਲ much honorable distinguished guests mayor sahiban and the soldiers of uh, british at this moment and uh, the soldiers of uh, world war second who made history today we have gathered here to remember the great sacrifice of six soldiers of world war 1 and second we are proud that sikh nation has helped the international community twice in the 20th century by fighting alongside with the allied forces of great britain usa france belgium canada australia and other countries to preserve peace and freedom in the world they have died in large numbers for all of us for our freedom 
and for our better future. We now live with dignity, honor, and pride. Their supreme sacrifices is in accordance with the teachings of our great Guru and our Sikh religion. This year 2014 is being remembered as the arrival of the Sikhs in Europe as well as the year of the beginning of World War I. Also the Sikhs had their first action against the European country that is Germany on 22nd of October 1914 near Hollyweg in Belgium where Sikh monument stands since, since 1999. Built by the city of Ypres and inaugurated by Panj Piaras to mark the third century of the birth of the Khalsa. That means these historical events are being celebrated throughout the world and in Europe by the Sikhs and the European together. The forces of British India played a major role in both world wars. Nearly 1.7 million men and women of the Commonwealth, including some 169,000 and 700 from the forces of undivided India died in 1940 till 1918 and in 1939 till 1945. In the First World War, the strength of the British Indian Army rose to 1.6 million with six as the major force nearly 33 percent. In Europe, six have fought in France, Belgium, Germany, Greece, Italy, Malta, Romania, and some graves of the six pilot and wounded are also in the United Kingdom. These were the soldiers who were wounded in France and in Belgium, and they were brought here and uh, they were treated here and they died here. In Africa, they have fought in Kenya and Tanzania. In Asia, they have fought in Hong Kong, India and Turkey. In the Middle East, they have fought in Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Lebanon, Palestine and Syria. In Europe during World War I, it fought in Belgium, Flanders, at Ypres twice from 22nd of October 1914 till 31st of October 1914. And from 20 April 1915 to 1st of May 1915. And in France, they have fought in La Bassee, Nav Chapelle from 10 to 13 of March 1915. They have fought in Ober Ridge, Feast Barrett, Laws on 25th of September 1915, Gravenchi and Somme from July 1916 to November 1916, thus fighting seven battles in France and two in Belgium. Commonwealth War Grave Commission has recorded 8,318 plus 493, thus total of 8,811 total names of British Indian soldiers who died in France and Belgium on the Western Front which is very far from the actual fact. My research has revealed that this is not true. During World War I on the Western Front, that is Belgium and France, only in 14 months, the Indian 
corps had lost 34,252 men, dead, wounded, ill, or prisoner of war, mostly the six. The losses of the 57th Wild Rifles and the 129th Bloches were great during the last two days of October 1914, during the first battle of Ypres. The Wild Rifles lost 300 men out of 750. The Bloche had 240 men killed, wounded, or taken as prisoner of war, and they, they are nowhere commemorated in Belgium. The Manon Gate in Ypres has the names of 15 casualties from the 47th Sikh Regiment. While alone on 27th April 1915, during the Second Battle of Ypres, out of 444 men, 340 Eight did not come back. They were nowhere also commemorated and between 24th of April and 1st of May 1915, the Lahore Division, which was center of Punjab, center of the Sikhs, they have lost 3,889 men or 30% of the forces that they have deployed there. I will mention here three letters of six soldiers written to their relatives from the battlefield to the Punjab to their relatives. A sixth soldier wrote to his uncle in Jalandhar, thousands and hundreds of thousands of soldiers have lost their lives. If you go on the field of battle, you will see corpses piled upon corpses so that there is no place to put hand or foot. Men have died from the stench. No one has any hope of survival. For back to Punjab will go only those who have lost a leg or a arm or a eye. The whole world has been brought to destruction. The spirit of the Khalsa can be felt from a poem written by Gurmuk, uh, written in Gurmukhi by Dabhadar Natha Singh to his relative in Punjab Jind, from Jind State on 18th of April 1916 from Second Lancers from the battlefield of France. He says, the Sikh roars like a lion on the field of battle. and yield, yield up his life as a sacrifice. Whoever is fortunate enough to be born a Sikh never fears the foe in battle. Actually, this was in Punjabi and it has been translated by Mr. Omesi, David from England. He gave up all thought of worldly players and dreams only of the battlefield. He who dies on the field of battle, <clears throat> his name <clears throat> never dies, but lives in history. He who fronts the foe boldly in battle, has God for his protection. Once a Sikh takes this sword in hand, he has only one aim, victory. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Okay, thank you, Papinder Singh Ji. Uh, as Papinder Singh has mentioned, he has written two books. One is Six in the World War I and the Six in World War II. And uh, we would like to, uh, he would like to launch the book Six and World War II. So may I ask Lord Inderji Singh, Councillor Tony Boyce,
ਸਾਡੇ ਫੌਜੀ ਵੀਰ ਤੇ ਹੋ ਆਪਣੇ ਚੇਅਰਮੈਨ ਆਫ ਐਪਿਕ ਫੋਰੈਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਅਦਰ ਗੈਸਟ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਫਾਰ ਯੂਰ ਟਾਈਮ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਗਿਵਨ ਯੂਰ ਵੈਲੂਏਬਲ ਟਾਈਮ ਫਾਰ ਅ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਈਵੈਂਟ ਫਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਆਈ ਮੈਟ ਸਾਬਾ ਪਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਇਨ 1999 ਇਨ ਕਨੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਦ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਟ੍ਰੈਕਟਰ ਸੈਂਟੀਨਰੀ of six race event that is a vasakhi so main tanu hun punjabi de vich kehna english vich tera koi kya gaya hai ga eh jehda jo jehdiyan eh do bookan likhiyan hoyiyan ne is to pehla ne do bookan likhiyan hoyiyan si jehdiyan ke paper bag san oh doven bookan baro barking the barking center library the devils library de vich oh hagiyan ne kisi ne padni oh vi pad sakde ne ਨੇ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਦੋ ਬੁੱਕਾਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਵਿਦ ਕੰਪਲੀਟ ਨਾਟ ਅ ਕੰਪਲੀਟ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਟ ਐਸ ਮਚ ਐਸ ਪਪਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਕੁੱਡ ਜਿਸ ਦਾ ਗੈਟ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਮੋਰ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਚ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਸਟਿਲ ਨੀਡ ਅ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਬਟ ਥੀਸ ਟੂ ਬੁੱਕਸ ਵਿਲ ਬਿਕਮ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਕਲ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟ ਫਾਰ ਆਵਰ ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਆਵਰ ਚਿਲਡਰਨ ਵਿਲ ਫੀਲ ਪ੍ਰਾਊਡ ਆਫ ਇਟ that our elders they sacrificed for us that's why we are here today i remember the word of mayor of eper when we went there as in the same mentioned and my colleague the same thing will be remembering that one during our reception i thanked the mayor of eper that uh, local dean if i'm not wrong sir in the same his name yeah so he uh, after i thanked him for the service he provided he vacated his town hall for this service for that commem- uh, commemoration for four days whole town hall gave a free and after i thanked what was his word is same word yes mr mayor if those brave soldier would have not laid down their lives neither you nor we will be over here today so their lives gave us a freedom we are enjoying today so our i'm sure our future generation will feel proud of their sacrifices thank you very much for listening I would like to welcome right honorable Stephen Thames member of parliament Lorinda Deechin honor guest and I would like to especially say welcome to my member of parliament Stephen Thames from Newham ladies and gentlemen it's a indeed a privilege for me to be part of this event today it's a historic event that we're celebrating the the centenary of the uh, first world war i think one of the things that is difficult in these circumstances is not to repeat what other speakers already said and that's very difficult to do but then again is anything wrong with repeating the things that we already so proud of so we must repeat that and i think it's important for our next generation for us to repeat the history and the legacy of those veterans that we have here today to give us that legacy to carry on and instill that importance and importantness of the six soldier in our youngsters so i would like to say in punjabi ek wo hote hain jo zamane ke saath saath badalte hain ek wo hote hain jo zamane ko badal dete hain what that means is there are those who change with time but there there's those who actually change the world and those are our veterans here, such as mr tate and that is what our youngsters need to see and take that legacy forward so we can carry that name and that assurance what the six soldier is there for i won't take too much of time because i know everybody's 
uh, had a long day today. But certainly I think one of the things we need to understand is why this is unique. All the figures that you've heard earlier on today, in terms of the percentages, why is this unique with, this, with the Sikhs? That is because this formation from a saint to soldier took 250 years and it's reverence to our gurus and it started with our Guru Nanak Dev Ji who said that you will not be able to face those weakness, those weak people without the lines to be in. So that is very important for us. It started with our Guru Nanak and ended with the Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Sa Sangh Ji, Sarayanda Bhotanwad, Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Prate. Thank you, Nanda Singh Ji. Thank you very much. Uh, you came all the way from Midland, so I really appreciate that. Thanks. May I now call Captain Sartar Singh Gongla to come on the stage and say a few words, please. Captain Sartar Singh Gongla. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. On behalf of the Armed Forces and the British Armed Forces Sikh Association, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the um, the council for inviting us here today uh, and to participate in this event. Um, it's been educational, inspirational and quite enlightening um, as well as serving as a reminder of the horrors of war and what our forebears have uh, went through. Events such as this and the annual gathering at the Shatri Memorial in Patcham near Brighton are key to raising the awareness of the immensely important contribution made by Sikh Hindu and Muslim soldiers towards the freedoms we enjoy today. This seva is critical in remembering those who made the ultimate sacrifice, giving their today for our tomorrow. We will remember them. As Sikhs, we're taught the importance of seva, and this duty to contribute to society extends beyond the walls of a Gurdwara or indeed the boundaries of our own community. Be it as a medical professional choosing to donate your time to help those less fortunate than ourselves, involvement in the political processes, either by voting or choosing to serve your country in Parliament, serving in the police or emergency services, or indeed, as me and my colleagues have chosen to do, joining the armed forces, it is important that every Sikh make a positive contribution to society and every Sikh should remember that this is the true Seva. Once again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this event. Captain, Captain Sartar Singh Gola, Lawrence Corporal Gurpal Singh, Private Harpreet Kaur, Private Harshal Singh and Corporal Ramesh Singh. Please come on the stage. Thank you. May I call Right on it was Stephen Timms and Mike Gibbs, please. And Councillor Cable Singh Chana. Thank you very much.